of Ordinary Madness. 26 radio services in my office. Do I have a chance to survive? In this episode you can learn how much energy humans in this environment absorb through radio waves. This is my office. It actually looks harmless and I really like working here. But there is a hell of a lot going on in the air we can't see here. I will tell you why now. First of all, here we see two PCs connected to my LAN via Wi-Fi. Then a printer, an air purifier, a wireless speaker, a homemade weather station and an iPad are also connected to the Wi-Fi network. And then my smartphone is usually lying around here, which is of course connected to a mobile network. And then there is a decked cordless telephone at the back. And then I have a couple of Bluetooth devices, a wireless computer keyboard, a mouse, a trackpad and a Bluetooth adapter for my headphones. And then there is also a Bluetooth headset and Garmin navigation devices who also work with Bluetooth. And now it occurs to me that PCs, iPads, smartphones and cordless phones also have Bluetooth devices. And then I have three LoRa boards in operation with which I often do experiments. It's all in my room where I've been working for years now. A number of other radio services penetrate my office from outside. There are radio and TV broadcasts from radio towers that are only three kilometers away, several mobile radio base stations, radio relay systems, etc. There are hundreds of radio services. I have to ask myself if I can actually survive this in the long run. Of course, I'm exaggerating a bit with this question, but so-called electrosensitive persons will probably get a skin rush just from watching the video. But that's not my topic today. Since I am a rational person, I would now like to know how much of this transmission energy that is in the air in my office is actually absorbed by my body. In fact, there are two questions. First, how much of the radio wave power does my body absorb at peak times? And second, how much radio wave energy does my body absorb in a day, in a year or in a lifetime? Okay, and these things are actually very difficult to measure accurately. But you can make a good estimate about it. Okay, let's see what the radio wave intensity looks like in my office. We see here the summed up intensity of all radio waves that arrive here at my desk while I work here. The current values are indicated by the blue curve and the red curve shows the mean value. And the upper curve in green shows us the peak value which is held for two seconds to make reading easier. We measure the intensity of the received power in dBm. This is a logarithmic value related to 1 milliwatt. On the y-axis we see the scaling. The measured values range between minus 30 dBm and minus 65 dBm. Incidentally, the irregular short peaks are typical for IP radio services. The radio channels are currently not fully utilized by far. This changes significantly when I use my smartphone to send an email with a picture. Then we suddenly see a large number of these pulses and the mean value in red also increases significantly. I can't see on what frequencies this is happening here, but I can see that there is a relatively large amount of energy in the air at this moment, so to speak. By the way, 
You can do this measurement with the serial plotter function of the Arduino IDE and the small self-made measuring device, which I will go into more detail in a moment. Of course, you can't measure energy absorption by humans directly. I have to do it through an indirect method. I'll take the RF RSSI meter, which I built some time ago. If you are interested, you can click on the video above. In the earlier video, I described how you can create such a device. After all, it is much better than the cheap commercial measuring devices and it has a lot of features that allow you to make evaluations over longer measuring campaigns. Bing! Yes, sometimes it might actually be worth subscribing to the channel. The device can measure the received field strength in a frequency range from 1 MHz to 8 GHz. I can record all radio services that I have in the house and almost all whose waves can penetrate my house. Of course, there are radio relays, satellites and radars that work on higher frequencies. However, the very short waves hardly penetrate into the house. I can connect the device to a PC and by using a terminal program I can record all the data it produces. The device measures every 25 milliseconds. But I don't have to record all this data of 24 hours, I only want a sample every 10 seconds. The device also calculates the peak RF power and the mean RF power within the 10 seconds. And this means that all values for averaging are recorded correctly and I don't miss any peak values within the 10 seconds intervals. The duty cycle indicates what percentage of the time the reception level is above a certain value. Yes, you can measure really interesting things with it. If you are interested in the topic, then I really recommend that you watch the earlier videos on setting up and operating the DIY devices. So, let's set up our little measuring device. We have seen in previous videos how to use it. Therefore, I would like to briefly explain here what we are doing differently this time. We use a broadband antenna. We can assume that the antenna picks up signals in the frequency range from a few megahertz to the upper end of our device's measuring range. The antenna is a so-called cone antenna. I built it myself from copper wire and painted it to keep the copper from oxidizing. Once the antenna is connected, the nice old moving coil display on the gauge then also shows us the activities in the air which we saw earlier on the Arduino IDE's serial plotter. I also built a version of the meter with a NeoPixel ring display in case that interests you. For the little measurement campaign I use the program CoolTerm to record the measured data. Since I want to deviate from the standard settings of the measuring device, I now have to tell the device what to do. I want to record a measurement on the PC every 10 seconds. So I have to choose TN equals 10,000 milliseconds. With the number NO equals 8640, we then cover exactly 24 hours. I set the peak hold time, PE equals 10 seconds, so that we always get the maximum value from a 10 second interval. Then I set the averaging for the moving average to AV equals 400 values. This corresponds to a floating averaging interval of 10 seconds in time. I set the duty level more or less arbitrarily to minus 55 dBm. I could use any other level that makes sense to me if I want to analyze any nearby transmitter activity. 
We now send this string to the device. And then we'll check if everything is set correctly. Ok, that all looks fine. We now start the recording by pushing the R key. And then I get a lot of additional values that I don't need, but this mode provides a header for the data lines. I let the recording run for 24 hours now. Of course, you don't have to wait that long in my video. Although, that might be cool. A 24 hours measurement video on YouTube. What do you think? Write me in the comments. So, a day later, we can take a quick look at the data that Coolterm has recorded in a text file. Ok, the data seems fine. And this is what the data looks like when loaded to Excel. And now we're almost ready to answer the burning questions. We carry out some analytics. First of all, it always makes sense to look at the data as a graphic. We look at the 10 seconds samples, the mean values, the peak values and the duty cycle. And yes, it clearly shows here that we switch off all our Wi-Fi devices at exactly 10 o'clock in the evening and switch them on again as needed from 6 o'clock in the morning. At about 10 o'clock in the morning it starts to get really busy because I started backups that went over the air. During the night the level drops by around 30 dB compared to the values during the day. That corresponds to a factor of 1000 on the power. This indicates that we produce 99.9% .9 of the electromagnetic fields ourselves in the house. Interesting, right? Then I want to determine the absolute peak value from the 24 hour measurement. It's very easy. I use the standard Excel function maximum to find the largest value from the entire RP DBM column. The absolute peak value in 24 hours was minus 17.82 dBm. And that was probably at the time when I was on my mobile phone. With a simple conversion we now determine the associated reception power in watts. So it's 16.5 microwatts. Now we know what radiation power our measuring device picks up via its broadband antenna. The question now is of course how much radiation power humans absorb. The following consideration is sufficient for my estimation. An antenna has a so-called effective area. Within this area the energy of the radio waves that are in the air flows into this antenna. The effective area of my cone antenna is 30 cm square. My body has an effective area of about 6300 cm square. One can assume that my body is not a particularly good antenna for radio waves. I suppose I only absorb 50% of the waves. With these considerations I can calculate how much energy my body absorbs. I get a factor of 105 related to the measuring device. We come back to the peak power we received. With a factor of 105, which we determined, we can now also estimate the peak power that I myself absorbed. It is about 1.73 milliwatts. I have to mention that my mobile phone was in 10 cm distance. In a closer distance, like putting the phone next to my head, this could go up to 100 milliwatts depending on the transmit power the mobile needs to reach its base station. So there is a big difference between the field energy that I'm absorbing passively 
compared to the field energy that I'm absorbing from my phone close to my head. Ok, that answers my first question. Now it gets a little bit more complicated, because we want to estimate the total energy absorbed by me in 24 hours. For this I now take the measured values Rs and convert them all into the corresponding power and then multiply this power by 10 seconds. With that we have calculated the energy for each of the 10 seconds intervals. Then we simply add up all the intervals to calculate the total energy for 24 hours. Then I use the factor 105 again to estimate the energy absorbed by myself in 24 hours. It is 0.41 watt seconds for a whole day. Just for comparison, what can I do with that amount of energy? 0.41 watt seconds corresponds to 0.41 newton meters. Well, with that energy you could lift your sandwich by 41 centimeters, provided that it weighs only 100 gram. Ok, that's rather a diet sandwich, but that's what you can do with that amount of energy. In a year this would be 150 watt seconds and in my whole lifetime, which I optimistically calculate with 100 years, it would be 1500 watt seconds or 4.17 watt hours. With this an LED lamp could shine for an hour. That would really be little for my whole life. Ok, that answers the second question. The insights. We have to put the measured energy in relation to usual amounts where we experience the effects so that we can understand what's happening here. My body, for example, constantly emits around 60 to 100 watts of heat energy. The heat energy that is constantly flowing out from my body is about 50,000 times larger than the incoming energy caused by the radio waves. When I lie down in the sun outside, around 600 watts of heat and other radiation hits my body. The sun's radiation that hits me comes with a factor of half a million stronger than the radio waves we were talking about. Folks, I think my worries about surviving in the radio waves are pretty much causeless. But you have already noticed this video wasn't about survival for me, but about how you can assess such things yourself in order to be able to form an educated judgment for yourself. And this is also a kind of survival in a figurative sense, namely in the flood of fake news that we are exposed to. Experts on the subject may forgive me for the simplifications for the calculation. By the way, there is a heated discussion about the harmfulness of weak radio waves. Mostly by people who have no idea about it and only want to uncover apparent sensations or develop their conspiracy theories. Very, very few people actually claim to get sick in the presence of radio waves. However, until now, science has not found any proof that someone could actually feel weak radio waves, nor has it been scientifically proven that they cause illness. Instead, there are many uses in medicine where radio waves are used to analyze heat, heal, etc. And the intensity of these waves is a million times greater than anything we have talked about today. It is actually tragic that we have to discuss such things in the face of really urgent problems caused by air, water and environmental pollution. And in these areas the connections with diseases are really proven. Now stay tuned. And don't forget to subscribe and support the channel.
See you soon in the coming episodes.